Good evening. My name is Michael Fiorentino. I'm starting to get a little too close to the mic. Uh, it's F-I-O-R-E-N-T-I-N-O. I'm an attorney, and I'm speaking tonight on behalf of Shale Justice. It's a 501c3 nonprofit coalition of organizations with membership in Columbia County. Their aim is to end extreme forms of industrialized fossil fuel extraction that pose serious threats to our air, our land, and our water. This public scoping meeting sponsored by FERC is being held as part of the Commission's, quote, pre-filing process, which in Shale Justice's view uh, is simply an attempt to accelerate the process of approving applications for certificates of public convenience and necessity. Scoping is an important consideration of the environmental impact statement, which must be prepared as a requirement of the National Environmental Policy Act, uh, of that uh, which is known as NEPA for short. Uh, the NEPA review must be undertaken by federal agencies in the context of federal action, such as approval of the natural gas transmission pipeline. Transco slash Williams presents a project to construct the high pressure natural gas line through numerous counties, uh, including Columbia and counties to the south, that will cause extensive disruption, degradation, or outright destruction of many environmental features all along the length of this pipeline. The FERC website indicates that it may hold scoping meetings before or after the filing of a corporation's application for what we've all been calling the permit, but in fact it's known as the Certificate of Public Convenience and Necessity. Uh, and the reason that FERC does that, it actually acknowledges that holding the meeting in advance of the filing of the application benefits the applicant, in this case, Williams. And this is no doubt true, not only as the website admits, because it allows the applicant to address the public's environmental concerns before preparing its final environmental reports, which must be submitted with the application. But in fact, this pre-filing scoping process also denies or very seriously diminishes the meaningfulness of public comment. And I'm glad to hear that many of you here tonight are already on to that. You, many of you have expressed just as a matter of common sense, that it's extremely difficult to come here uh, and try to present lucid comment that is insightful uh, and meaningful about these particular impacts when we don't have uh, adequately definitive information about the project. Um, Congress determined that environmental impact statements would provide meaningful guidance to decision makers, and the courts have consistently upheld uh, these requirements in cases that deal with the National Environmental Policy Act. The Council on Environmental Quality, which is a federal uh, entity, has been tasked by Congress to develop regulations for implementing the procedural provisions of NEPA. And CEQ developed a regulation establishing the scoping requirements. That's what we're here doing tonight, to address significant issues pertaining to a proposed action. But as I've just said, and as many of you said, what's extremely frustrating about this so-called scoping process is that for residents of Columbia County and other interested groups, the pre-filing process, in fact, deprives them of the ability to comment upon the scoping of uh, specific environmental and related issues based on concrete information. Because the application is yet to be submitted by Williams Transco, there is only limited factual information about the pipeline and its intended path. The July 18th notice of intent that FERC uh, has issued, it's out on the table out there, uh, featured a mere two pages of information about the project itself, and much of that was with bullet point. The notice indicates that information about the, quote, general location of the pipeline can be found uh, in uh, if you go to the e-library section of the FERC website. Well, I did that, and I followed the, the instructions carefully. However, I was unable to locate any information that would have been loaded on that system uh, about the project. 
Now, maybe somebody else could find it. Um, maybe it's available in some other manner that I haven't found yet. But it seems to me it's rather difficult for the average member of the public to access this information. So, uh, in all likelihood, even such general location maps would be insufficient for any person to really assess uh, the nature of uh, these actual environmental impacts. Uh, so you, you've got to speak, you've got to decide what your public comment on scoping is going to be in terms of safety, environment, culture, archaeological issues, historic issues. There, there's a long list of different kinds of concerns that you could be raising, but it's very difficult because you don't know exactly where this thing is going. And in fact, the representatives of Williams Outside specifically told me that it's, they don't really know yet exactly where it's going to be, it can change. If so, you could please wrap up. You've, I'm sorry? You've already reached five minutes. If you could just wrap up right, quickly. I'll, I'll so wrap up. Thank you. So in order to avoid potential for legal challenge from the public on grounds of inadequate public participation under the rules and the statutes, as well as the constitutional due process violations, Shale Justice urges the Commission to ensure meaningful public participation by keeping the scoping phase open and rescheduling additional scoping meetings for the public subsequent to the filing of the Transco application, which we've been told will be March 2015. At a bare minimum, the Commission must maintain the public comment period for scoping beyond that period of time. Keep in mind that um, the uh, eminent domain authority, which will be transferred here, is a, if FERC gives a certificate, is a very serious matter. And I believe, legally, it is unsupportable as a public utility. And frankly, uh, the pipeline does, in fact, serve only to increase corporate profit and will readily assure the ability of gas producers to export, export Pennsylvania's natural resources overseas. Thank you. Thank you. submit supplements uh, up until the uh, August 18th uh, deadline established, or if in fact uh, our request is honored and the extension is granted, we would also appreciate the right to submit supplements at that time. Thank you. I, I just wanted to repeat, um, you know, we have the end of the scoping period on August 18th. We will continue to accept um, comments and address comments after that period. However, the sooner that you get them to us, the more time we will have to look at your comments. Thanks. <laughs> My name is Jay Lake, L-E-I-G-H-O-W. I'm a lifelong resident of Hemlock Township, Columbia County. And yes, I am a landowner of which the proposed pipeline is going across. I have two concerns about uh, the way Williams is handling this situation because of two potential environmental impacts. One is, I'm a second generation farmer and water that supplies our pasture is supplied by an underground iron ore mine. And to date, Williams has, their proposal is to run this pipeline across the uh, iron ore mine. Now what happens if they stop that water supply? Are they gonna drill me a new well? And to go in and uh, resupply the water. Secondly, <clears throat> they had no knowledge of these uh, iron ore mines. <clears throat> what happens if there's uh, mine subsidence settling after construction phases? I've seen what uh, natural gas can do, you know, even after, maybe not now, maybe not 10 years down the road, but 15 years, if there's a small leak in a gas line that fills the cavity of this iron ore mine, it has a potential for going for miles. All it needs is an ignition source, you know, whether it's natural or man-made. Um, I'd just like to know what they're going to do about it. All right? Thank you. Our next speaker is Jennifer Wisner. Jennifer Wisner, W-H-I-S-N-E-R. I also am a professor at Bloomsbury University. I teach in the Department 
of environmental, geographical, and geological sciences, but I'm here tonight in my capacity as the chair of the Columbia Montour Coalition for Source Water Protection. And uh, other speakers have already very eloquently described the dangers associated with fossil fuel extraction, fossil fuel use, disposal of uh, the, the byproducts of extraction. They've talked about the personal dangers, they've talked about health issues. Uh, I'm going to confine my comments to water, water resources and some, make some suggestions. Uh, we are concerned that uh, Williams is not taking into account the public and private water supplies in Columbia County. Uh, there are more than half of the population of Columbia County is on private residential wells and as they construct this pipeline, as I believe Mr. Keeley pointed out, it's going to change uh, infiltration rates, and that could affect not only wells right in the pipeline pathway, but also wells away from the pathway. So we think that, that should be something that is addressed in the environmental impact assessment. We also want the, we also would like FERC to consider the impact on public water supplies. Some public water supplies in Columbia County, including Millville, uh, which from the current proposed route, uh, it appears that Millville may not be impacted, it appears that Catawissa may not be impacted, but as the route changes, existing source water protection plans and identified source water protection zones must be addressed in the environmental impact statement. Um, it's a major water provider for Columbia County, United Water, draws from surface water in the Fishing Creek watershed. It's a huge watershed that extends over much of Columbia County, it's 450 square miles or something along those lines. And the pipeline, uh, once, uh, for much of its extent in Columbia County, goes through that watershed. There's going to be considerable, uh, probably addition of sediment to the Fishing Creek watershed, not just as the pipeline's being constructed, but for an extended period of time because protective vegetative cover that's holding the soil in place will be removed. That is something that needs to be considered because United Water supplies more than, I think in 2003 it was 21,500 people in <coughs> with water. So that is, must be addressed in the environmental impact statement. A few speakers have already noted the potential impact of sensitive geologic areas. There is karst that the pipeline goes over. If that happens to be recharge area for local wells and the pipeline construction allows more water or perhaps prevents water from infiltrating where it normally infiltrates, that will affect our water quality and water resources in perpetuity. Uh, going over abandoned mines is something that really has to be kept in mind because oftentimes we don't know where those old mine shafts are and it's very hard to identify them uh, we have some good records for coal mines, but some of the iron mines we don't know that they're there until they go over. That should specifically be addressed in terms of water quality as in places where the pipeline ends up going, going through. Uh, we also would like the impact, environmental impact statement to consider high quality waters. The southern part of Columbia County, where it goes through the Warren Creek watershed, I believe is downstream of the Aqua America water supply that, that supplies more than 60,000 people in a five, six, possibly seven or eight county area uh, may not be impacted if the route is uh, downstream of the in intake, but it could potentially affect a high quality stream, the Ro Roaring Creek, which uh, is alone in, this, in that area for being relatively unimpacted by acid mine drainage. And uh, on a personal note, I would also like you to consider proximity to schools. It is going very close to uh, Green Friends School. <coughs> 